therefore times on the screen, alleluia, 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 alleluia. So the trick is the tune. So we'll let Sonia introduce the tune, and we'll sing it through a couple of times, just so we make sure we get it in our heads. Good morning. 
Um, I'll talk to you first about updating you about action groups that um, are happening, have been happening. <clears throat> first of all, about the Cedar Hedge concert series. It has been going really well, and the organizer, Matthew Large, was in touch with us uh, through Deirdre uh, to ask that we have a second series uh, during the season of 2024-2025. Uh, and we're happy to approve of that. And uh, that will be another nine concerts. And um, you will receive this report in through your email in the Sunday Blast, and uh, all those dates will be listed. Um, our beloved uh, Build Becoming Beloved Community series was very well received um, jointly between us and Knox, uh, five sessions. And we were very uh, pleased at the end of those sessions uh, on Easter Sunday morning to welcome uh, members to the congregation and also to have several people renewing their faith. Uh, please know that uh, those who were not able to attend all of the sessions, um, there will be a chance uh, for um, an, another uh, a shorter session uh, version of the series with me, uh, so please meet with me uh, after church and we can set a time. So that's just a few people that were interested in doing follow-up to those classes that weren't able to attend. Um, I understand there may be some people who uh, would like to renew their faith or perhaps others who would like to become members of the church. Uh, Kirsty will be doing a similar series uh, again in the fall. Um, and if anyone is one to renew your faith before that, uh, please speak up and we can arrange for anyone anytime to renew their faith. It is a wonderful thing to do and we certainly encourage that. We talked about the uh, Easter Sun Rise Breakfast. Very happy that that happened, and great for especially to Bob and Lynn for organizing that. And we certainly hope that this will continue to be an annual event, maybe with the same chefs. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we have now set the date for the Strawberry Supper. It will be on Monday, June the 24th. Monday, June the 24th. So please keep that in mind at the Egypt Hall again. And think about how you can help and how you can get your family and your friends uh, also to help. Our ministry and personnel committee um, have... Uh, been uh, working with Sonia, who now has two roles in the congregation. I think people know that, but I just want to make sure that you do, uh, both as uh, director of music and also administrative assistant. So we're very happy that, that <coughs> Sonia is there for us. And uh, Nancy Pickering continues to do uh, our bookkeeping work. We keep on uh, reviewing our roles and responsibilities and finding um, gaps and things. And so please, if you see any, any gaps or have concerns, as Kirsty says, there's the, the comment uh, box or question box, or feel free to raise anything. Um, and that applies to anything that... Um, uh, should be happening that isn't or that you would like to happen and, and that also would be uh, any action groups that you would like to have. Uh, we have been talking, you've heard us speak about becoming an affirming congregation. Our leadership team is uh, first of all informing ourselves through Kirsty about the process and what is involved and um, you'll be hearing more about that as time goes by. And again, if you have questions, uh, ask them or put them in, in the box. Um, that's my report for the morning. Uh, Liz, you wanted to I say? I have an announcement. It's from Ruth. Ruth has been able to keep contact because, we're, because of our, our uh, YouTubes and 
whatever. And she really appreciates seeing them. And she absolutely loved last week's service. And I just thought I'd pass them along. So Thank you, know that She really, really enjoyed it. Good. That's good to have that feedback and to know. And Carol, yes. to, the, to the same note, uh, how vitally important it was for us to stay connected while we were out of country. And I, I, I encourage all churches to consider technological components to maintain ministry with those who can't be present in the church. It was so important. Yeah. Good. And it, it was wonderful to see your comments. Thank you. Can you just remind us who exactly is the leadership? Team again. All right. Um, I chair that team. Um, the secretary is Lorraine. Uh, Blair is on as treasurer. Sue is on as regional rep. And Kathy Trollope is a member at large. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm uh, chair. And sorry. And Rep. Kirsty is there. Oh, and must be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Lorraine. Lorraine. Doris. I know Lorraine has some announcements. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please. Um, just in case anyone hasn't seen it, either on Facebook or in the Georgian Post, there is a lovely article on volunteerism. And the headliner is Susan Williams. Yeah. 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 All the things she's done, and they missed a few, <laughs> but um, yeah. we appreciate her, love her, and nice that you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have an announcement? Go ahead. Um, Laura spoke about the affirmations of faith last week in our Easter service, as well as our um, uh, those who were baptized and became members of the church, and. In um, our First Nations uh, community, uh, you give something when you receive something. And so I received the affirmation of faith from, from my God and from this congregation. And um, so I would like to present you with this little banner that was presented to me from folks at Georgina Island. It's made by um, Bev Warren. You may know Bev and her work. And um, I often look up here at this little dove when I'm in the choir, and I thought this little Easter people might uh, look nice in this window shining too. So and this is gifted to you as the congregation and on behalf of my reaffirmation of faith. Are there any other announcements? Go ahead, Anne. John's nurse signed him off. Oh, oh the wound has healed and he is well. Yeah. I have an announcement as well. Um, we're heading towards the middle of April which means around the corner is May, which means our annual lawn sale, garage sale, whatever you want to call it. So please keep it in mind. Start digging through those cupboards. Tell your neighbors we're looking for stuff. <laughs> and of course, all hands that can be on deck. So just keep... Um, I'm going to say the date in mind is it the 18th? It's early this year. Anyway, we'll get back to you on the exact Saturday. But please keep it in mind. My name, my name. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you need to put it in a nice, neat, small box, it can all lit. A dear Grim Bill have offered a bit of storage. Uh, he says he has room for. 24 boxes. <laughs> so, and if you put it in there, you have to help get it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we find it and, we, and then we don't want to store them. But we have space, right? Marlene? That's wonderful. Thank you. Which means we can start now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Okay, if there's no other announcements, we'll start with our land acknowledgement and commitment to reconciliation. I mean, we at Virginia United Church acknowledge that the land this church stands on is traditional territory of the indigenous peoples of the Williams Tree, in particular, our neighbors, the Chippewa of Georgina Island First Nation, and settled by our ancestors. With grateful hearts and minds, we promise to continue to live in friendship and with respect in creation. This week, we note the 25th anniversary of Nunavut. It was created as part of a plan to protect Inuit language and culture. Our current Governor General, Mary Simon, is Inuk and was in, in Kualut <laughs> to mark this occasion. We commit ourselves to increasing our understanding and walking a new way together, a path of healing and hope. <laughs> and we'll share together the call to worship. The word of life spoke. So we can hear the hallelujahs of the angels. The word of life reached out. So, so we, we could have the hope which shields us. The word of life walked out of the tomb. So, so, so we, we could follow him and do life forever. So let us worship in this place that God is creating, where all are embraced. Together we become beloved community. We light our Christ candle as a visible sign of Christ's presence among us and as a sign of Christ's peace between us. I'm going to invite you to share that with sign language. So um, just a quick reminder, it's peace be with you. So let's do that all together. Peace be with you. And we can return it and also. All right. So, you may have noticed that there are prayer shawls scattered throughout the sanctuary. Uh, Deirdre came into the church last week bearing gifts, uh, gifts of her work and uh, of some other people's work as well. So, uh, if you can find yourself near a, a, sh a shawl, I'm just going to invite you to put your hand on it um, and we will bless them all together. I, I think it's important to note that the prayer shawls, um, I sometimes call them a virtual hug, you know, a hug when you need somebody there. But it's more than that. It's more than just the warmth. The prayers that are said when they're created, the prayers that we offer now, are a part of their work. Um, to know that those prayers are wrapped around you, not just a shawl. So, let us bless them. So, hands on. Holy God, we ask that you would bless these shawls, that they would gather around the people who need them, that they would provide healing and hope <clears throat> and knowledge in the heart of the person who is wearing them, that they are beloved of you and that they are loved by all of us. Amen. 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 All right. Our song of praise this morning is a good one to sing on such a beautiful day that started with all the birds singing. This is God's wondrous world. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the first book, Theophilus wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convicting proofs, appearing convincing proofs, <laughs> appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God while staying with them. He ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight, while he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were saying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon of Z Zealot, Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brother. This is the reading from God's Word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So, uh, before we begin, I just want to uh, do a little uh, teaching moment that the teacher part of me loves this kind of stuff. So, at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel writer says, since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the very beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. And so we see that Acts 
is a continuation of the story, the sort of before the, uh, the crucifixion and then after the resurrection. So this is the after the resurrection book. And you can see this because it's written to the same guy. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote all about what Jesus did and taught from the beginning. So this is, what do we do now? Um, I asked the, that question on Easter, that moment when there's all of that concern and worry and we have to figure this out. And where do we go from here was my question last. Well, Acts is the answer. Acts is where we get into working out. Um, well, here's where we're going. And here's how we're going to do it. It's all about what the apostles did. It's all about what the early church did. It's all about their actions in the world, the way that they witnessed to what Jesus was to them and what Jesus was for others. And in doing, telling stories and, and in the way that we act, motivation counts for a lot. I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, some sort of uh, like snarky drama of an actor going, yes, but what is my motivation for this scene, right? <laughs> motivation is important. Like why we do things matters. You know, sometimes it, when you hear about things, people will say, but why did they do that? You know, it, sometimes people ask me that when they experience my cooking. Why did you do that? Oh, this is such a strange taste. But, you know, there's, there's all, that motivation matters. We want to know why. And for the apostles, and by extension us, the answer to why are we doing anything has to be faith. It's our faith that's teaching us to do that. In the Acts of the Apostles, we're going to read little bits about how they created communities where everything was shared among them and people saw them and joined. Why were they doing it? Because of their faith. Because this is the way that they have been taught by Jesus to be together. They were feeding widows and orphans and taking up collections. Paul will write things like, and of course I was glad to take the collection for the widows and orphans. And why are they doing that? Because of their faith. Because that's the way that Jesus taught them. That's the way that they were together. We hear about uh, how they're creating clothes to, to help people maintain their dignity. Why are they doing that? They're just really excited seamstresses? Well, maybe. But because of their faith. Because God was among them and taught them how to be with one another. And when the disciples were in that room where they had been staying, and they started to pray, why were they doing that? Because of their faith. That's how God taught them to be. And so when we see people in our world doing things based on their faith, we know that they are being a witness for what they believe God is teaching them to do. Um, and this can go sometimes uh, be seen in a negative way as well. There was an uh, earthquake in New York. Uh, I don't know if anybody heard that on the news. Pretty small earthquake, so everybody was good with just, you know, complaining about it from being New Jersey, right? And, and so, but there was a, a U.S. congressperson who put out a, a little social media post that said, earthquakes are a sign from God that we need to repent. What kind of witness is she being for God? What is she saying about God in that piece? That God is angry. That there are people who need to repent, but not her usually. Usually the people calling for that, they're, they're fine. <laughs> um, my mother-in-law taught me that as a very young woman when uh, I got a psycholo psychology textbook and there's all of these different levels of understanding and morality. She said, they're all written by dudes who think that they're the best one. <laughs> so, she's not wrong. <laughs> but 
But there's, there's also a way that we can witness positively to our faith, right? That the way that we are in the world counts. One of my experiences being in this community, because I decided to wear the uniform, uh, since not everybody in town knows me. The last place I was in, there was like 200 people in the town and they all knew who I was. <laughs> so they, they knew who I was, but not everybody here does, so <laughs> uniform. But it means that when I'm in the community, everything that I do matters. If I don't tip well at the restaurants, <laughs> what am I saying about the generosity of God, right? When we are in the world, we are witnesses to our faith, we are witnesses to who we are. And if we wonder, why are churches empty? Why won't people come? Think about the kinds of messages that they get. My son, who has me as his mom, talks about how churches don't believe in science. And I'm like, I did two years of science. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. <laughs> it just, you know, because that message is so pervasive in the culture, right? That people who are Christian don't believe in science. That people who are Christian believe in anger and an angry God. People who are Christian believe in a robust Jesus who likes to uh, kick butt and take names. So everybody dresses in jeans and is super rugged and grabs their gun. Uh, uh, people in the culture hear that Christians don't like people of whatever. Pick your category. And why would you go to a place like that? It's so angry. And so we though, are sometimes afraid to talk about why we're doing things according to our faith. It's tough, but everything that I do is in some way related to my faith in God. When I am talking about how I work to love other people, I do that because I believe in a God who loves us. I'm acting that way because of my faith. When I am writing letters to politicians or going to meetings at the city council, I am doing that because of my faith. I want to be there to talk about housing so that people in my community can live a safe and dignified life because everybody is beloved of God and worthy of that care. When I talk about inclusion, it is because of my faith. My faith in a God who is open and welcoming and full of hope for each person. The whole person. That I make those statements. When I work for a world that is careful of the environment, it is because of my faith and the mission that we are part of to be stewards in creation to be good carers for the world that God has created. When I stare at the sky in wonder, it is because of my faith and I am filled with gratitude and awe. But we have this idea of what evangelicism means, that it's a hard process, a process about converting people. It doesn't have to be. There are a whole bunch of people who are witnesses to their love of the Maple Leafs. And they put up their signs, and those of us who are, say, fans of the Calgary Flames are feeling a little sad for them, really. Um, <laughs> so we understand their pain. Except our win was a little more. But anyway, um, but we are evangelists for hockey and their team. I mean, I don't think less of people if they cheer for their team. We're just glad they're on board. Excellent. I'm, evangel I'm an evangelist for the CFL. Now, I am going to try to convert you because I believe it is a much better game <laughs> than, the, than the NFL. Uh, the product in the field is really good. Um, I like the commentators. I will talk about the CFL quite a lot. <laughs> Give me an opportunity. But the... We can talk about these things. We can talk about why we love these things in a way that makes us a good witness, a loving witness to our faith. And I think that that is our opportunity, our joy. 
because I hear so often in my ministry, and I'm sure others in ministry have heard the same thing, that when people have hit bumps in the road, it is their faith that got them through. That they were able to persevere because of their faith. Their faith in a God that has persevered for them. And I think that's a good story to tell. And I'm happy to be that witness. Amen. 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 Our song for reflection this morning is Go Make a Difference. Don't pay any attention to the number on the screen. Just pay attention to the words. It's actually more voices 209. Uh, I got a little ahead of the book. But the words are
your blessings upon these offerings and the offerings of our lives. May you help us to use all of the gifts you have given us wisely and well and for you in this, your world. Amen. Amen. I love how we carefully pass over the names every week. That always it feels like an offering. So um, let's start with our celebrations. We heard one celebration earlier, and that John's recovery is recovery. <laughs> this is good. Are there other celebrations that folks would like to share? I, I just want to celebrate uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit this morning that invited me to drive a little slower because the birds keep uh, flying right across the road. So, <laughs> so it's just a little reminder. Slow down. <laughs> Enjoy the drive. Be careful. So that's that was my little celebration. All the little birds have arrived this morning and just greeting the dawn and, and uh, inviting me to be more careful. <laughs> Are there any others? So let's turn to concerns, and I'll read our uh, prayer list here. Our prayer list includes Jay, Patty, uh, Evan, Blair and Sue, Lillian, Leanne, Kim, Jim, Dinah, Mitch, Peter, Debbie, Marjorie, Kevin. Prayer for a ceasefire and humanitarian aid in Gaza, and prayer for travelers on the road. Are there other concerns that folks would like to add to this prayer list? Yes. Um, Elizabeth, as she goes through exams, her final year. Elizabeth and Isaac, as he recovers in hospital. And Isaac. I should put June and Peter. Oh no, Vicky. Vic, Vicky. June and Vicky. Okay. I think that one name was. Ivan? Was it Ivan? Okay, thank you. I will make that clear. I did question, that's why I sort of looked at it twice. Thank you for correcting me. Ivan, not Evan. Any other uh, names? Situations that we need to bring before us? I remember it was even in Taiwan. So there was a really minor earthquake in New York, but a 7.5 uh, or 7.8 earthquake in Taiwan, which has caused landslides and, and some pretty uh, severe destruction. So prayers for all of those who are affected, um, those who are injured, and those who are providing aid. Any others? Okay. I'm going to invite you to just take a deep breath. Let us pray. Empty your tombs. You raised Jesus from the grave so all fears might be banished. So the locked doors of our hearts could be flung open. So our quivering wits could declare what we have seen and heard. Bright glory of God, as you stood in the middle of your friends on that first Easter night, come among us now, in this time and place, showing us that grief and guilt no longer stand in the way of our life with you. Breath of peace, strengthen us, so we may stand with those who live in wonder. Take our hands in yours, so we may serve all who are broken or in need. Inspire us to share the grace which has been breathed into our very souls. God of all blessings, we give thanks for all that is good in the world and in our lives. We raise up the celebrations shared among us today. We know that you are also with us when we need compassion and companionship. With other churches around the world, we pray together for Bulgaria, Hungary, and Romania. We pray for the ministries of Shining Waters, 
Caledon East United Church, Glebe Road United Church in Toronto, Grace United Church in Brampton, and Pioneer Memorial United Church in Hillside. Here we remember those on our own prayer list and those whose names have been spoken among us. And in a moment of silence, we give to you the thoughts and needs that we have not spoken aloud, the deepest signs of our hearts. give the prayers of our being, knowing you have already and are always answering them. We join our voices in prayer as you taught, you who loves us as a mother, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final song this morning, our song for the journey. Look at that. How in spring can you not believe that anything is possible? Our final uh, song for this morning is May the God of Hope Go With Us. So I invite you to stand and sing in joy. generously, wonderfully upon each one of us, that the grace of Jesus Christ is offered hopefully to each one of us, and that the Holy Spirit playfully breathes with us this moment and always. Amen. 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 Oh, now in peace. 